Hi everyone, today we're talking about accents in foreign language learning. So we're going to start and just discuss why is um, accent specifically important and also a bit on pitch accent and some tips on how you can learn and improve your accent. First of all, uh, there are I guess two schools of thought on learning an accent in a foreign language. On the one hand, there's the group of people who say don't even start speaking a foreign language until you've perfected your accent or at least um, learn the accent comfortably and then you'll sound more native when you speak. On the other hand, there are people who say eh, accent is not really uh, super important. The point is to communicate. It's okay if you sound bad, people will still understand you. Unfortunately, it is true that people are not always going to be very patient with you and if you do have a natural sounding accent, maybe they will interpret you as more fluent and they will spend more time talking to you. I'm talking about people like in public, but if you have a language exchange partner, that is a different story. Personally, I think it's great to have a holistic approach and combine learning the accent and pronunciation with your learning. So here's a little bit of a confession. Uh, the Korean sounds O and A are both uh, either written as O or EO when they're romanized in English. So when I was learning Korean, it took me about two years to differentiate between O and A. And I found it very difficult to differentiate between those sounds. It was only until somebody showed me how to form my mouth that I could understand how to make the sound. You can Google on YouTube as much as you want, but there has to be somebody who can actually show you how to make the sound if you are stuck. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, maybe I have a textbook with a CD, but I don't really have someone to really help me and correct my pronunciation. I have the app for you! So this video is kindly sponsored by Tandem which is a language exchange app and you can not only send text messages but also voice notes and video calls. The basic interface is that you have your chats here. At the bottom you can go to community where you can find speakers of different languages. In my profile it says I'm native in English and Afrikaans, I speak Korean and Japanese and I'm learning Spanish, Vietnamese and Tagalog. You can search in the community for tutors of the language, so there's a tutors tab here, or you can just go in community and look for language learners and people to exchange with. Oh, somebody here uh, recognizes me from YouTube. Hello, you are my YouTube idol. I can teach you Tagalog. Uh, hi, Jerome, if you're watching this, thank you for the message, and uh, I'm very grateful that you will help me with Tagalog. On the more options, you can see that you can view their profile, follow them, video call, or audio call them. So the app is very, very diverse. A problem that people have with some language learning apps is, oh, but the people don't really want to practice with me. They don't want to talk or they just want to flirt or just be friends. And nobody is serious about learning. What I love about Tandem is it lets you write in your profile what you are looking for in an ideal language partner. And that is very helpful for you also to filter when you're looking for people. Over here, I filled in their three sections, which is your passions and hobbies, people you'd like to talk with, and your language learning goals. So I specifically said in my language goals that it is to improve my speaking confidence and pronunciation and learn more vocabulary about daily topics. So now that that is in my profile, anybody who comes here can see that I am serious about language exchange and improving my pronunciation. Something else that will help you feel good and safe about Tandem is to note that they have a moderation team and this team reviews the applications to ensure that Tandem is made up of friendly language learners. Although it could take up to seven days to be accepted, most members are accepted very quickly. I for one was accepted within an hour. What that does is it removes spam and I feel a lot safer using Tandem and to know that, wow, people here are really serious about language learning. You also don't need to be shy about asking people to help you. So in person, if you are talking to someone who's not necessarily a language exchange partner, you can feel a little self-conscious to always say, sorry, could you repeat that? Or uh, do you mind saying that slower? But in the context of an app like Tandem, you can see here, I've just asked this girl, um, could you please read your message for me on a voice note? your Spanish message that you've sent because I would like to improve my accent. So let's see if she sends a voice note back. Oh, it seems Irene has sent me her message. Let's listen. Wow. And it seems that she's speaking with a Spain Spanish accent. Let me check her profile. Ah, yes, she is from Spain. 
pero ahora mismo tengo menos tiempo. It sounds like the Spanish, the Spain accent doesn't emphasize the S as much. But um, this is extremely useful for me. So now I know that where there's an S, it's not so strong in the Spain Spanish accent. Idiomas, like she doesn't say idiomas, it's like idiomas. It's very soft. They do have a pro subscription, which has various features, but most notably there is unlimited translations, the ability to find members near you or search within your city if you're looking to meet up with somebody. And just a reminder to check the download link in the description if you are interested in getting Tandem to practice with native speakers and to improve your accent. So do check out Tandem. Personally, I do use it myself, so you might see me on there. Then something that I've been reading up about a lot and been seeing online and in blogs and YouTube is uh, the pitch accent, especially in Japanese. There is a YouTuber called Dogen who makes uh, Japanese teaching videos and videos on like, the Japanese language in Japan. He is uh, not Japanese, but his Japanese is very, very fluent. And part of the reason he sounds so native and fluent is because he has the pitch accent very down. Very down. He has it down very well. <laughs> You can check out his videos, he does a series on how to sound more native through learning the pitch accent and he goes really really into detail so I'm not going to talk about pitch accent too much in this video, I'll just give you a little overview of what it is. A pitch accent language is a language with word accents, meaning that one syllable in the word is more prominent than the others. Pitch accent languages include Japanese, Norwegian, Swedish, Turkish, Western Basque and a few others. In his videos, Dolgen mentions that Japanese learners don't always study the pitch accent and that's why they struggle to sound native. A lot of people believe that the Japanese language is flat with no like tones. True, it's not a tonal language per se, but it does have a pitch accent on specific words. An example that he gives is gakuse, which can either mean student or the right side, depending on where you put the emphasis in. So for student, you start low and you go up. Gakuse, Gakse, and for the right side it's gakse, gakse. Uh, a bit difficult to hear, uh, he explains it very well, but basically that is pitch accent. And then lastly, there are regional accents and dialects, and how do you choose one to learn? If you are a second language English learner, you have to make a very big choice. Are you going to learn American English or British English or even Australian South African? different types of English. So that's also something to keep in mind. Also for Vietnamese, do you study the northern or the southern accent? Uh, when we are looking for resources in a language, it's sometimes difficult to find them for, for some languages and then we just kind of make do with what we have, but then we end up mixing accents or pronouncing one word in a southern accent and one word in the northern Vietnamese accent. Uh, so something for Vietnamese that I really enjoy is a YouTube channel called SVFF southern Vietnamese for foreigners, and they focus exclusively on the southern pronunciation, uh, which is a great resource and I wish more languages um, would differentiate between accents for you to learn. In my talk at the Polyglot conference, I also spoke a bit about how my accent is a space for me to explore my identity in, particularly now my English accent, not for a language one. People will see you differently depending on what you sound like. And I'm not saying that to be mean, that is really what society is. If you sound a certain way, people are going to project an image on you based on that. So once I came back from living for five years in Dubai, I went to an American school there and I had a very, very strong American accent. I came back to South Africa and people thought I was American. They didn't even ask if I was South African. And I walked into a home language Afrikaans class and my classmate said, what are you doing here? You're not Afrikaans. I was like, uh, Nia, I like, like Afrikaans. Like, no, actually I am Afrikaans. And she was like, what? But you have an American accent. Uh, so just by having this American accent, she had already projected on me that this is a foreigner. She doesn't speak Afrikaans. Uh, she doesn't belong in the whole language Afrikaans class. And uh, being in high school in an all girls school where it was a bit clicky and it was hard to fit in, I thought, wow, man, the only way I'm going to fit in and make friends here is if I sound like them. And I did everything I could to try and sound more South African. I started using a lot more South African slang and really tuning in my ears to how they pronounce certain words, um, where their emphasis is on. 
and uh, in a few months I sounded very very South African and looking back I feel like yeah that was maybe a coping mechanism for a young high school girl who wanted to fit in but now I embrace my international accent whatever it is um, and yeah my accent does fluctuate remember that your accent will fluctuate throughout the years and that's okay it's just part of being normal and human and that is all for today thank you so much for watching and i wish you all the best in your language learning and um your journey to improve your accent see you guys in the next video Bye bye